welcome to Pigeon River Farm, doing farming right. I'm Robert Brown, the owner of Pigeon River Farm. Thank you for viewing. Well, good morning from Pigeon River Farm. I wanted, this is the next update on the hybrid tractor project. Well, we've fulfilled the objective. Um, the tractor functions. It works very good. Still got a little shoring up to do to get the polishing in. But I'm getting very close to going to the next phase. So as of right now, uh, the tractor operates as designed. I've had it out, as you can see here. Uh, it works very well. Um, haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. Uh, got some polishing, some tuning to do within uh, the controls. But as far as functionality, we've hit that 100%. So let me give you a little review here of what, everything that we have. So first off, we went into the belt pulley and replaced that with a large pulley. Put a, a large dual belt on it. And then we come over here to our Warp 9 motor. And we put a respective pulley to get our ratios correctly. And right now at... 3,600 RPMs on this motor. I'm at 520 RPMs. So you can see you got to make one little minor adjustment there. So we're having a 540 at the PTO is a very doable deal. So move forward here. We've got our controller. So this has got the large transistors in it that actually do the switching of the high voltage. Remember, this is a 144 volt system. So 144 volt system, we got 12 group 31 batteries in here, industrial grade batteries. So that gets us that 144 volts. And then of course we're higher than that with the normal battery. I won't go into that whole explanation. If you know about batteries, you understand how that works. So now that we have that high voltage, we have a high voltage relay here that is going to, when energized, going to make power available to the controller. So in turn, we'll take and chop that voltage, chop that DC into chunks to vary the voltage to our motor. Now, we had a couple things that were really critical to this design. One is the original design here was intended for an electric car application where you have a throttle. Well, I needed a governor, or I think cruise control. I needed that ability to have one fixed speed. So we need to be able to lock the motor in at one given speed. And then if we increase or decrease the load, it stays at that speed based on the throttle positions. So that is really what we have here is we have a speed control governor that my friend Eric and I put together. Came up all the criteria. He built the boards. It's quite innovative. Uh, we talked about in some last previous sessions. So this is now working. There's a few little tuning pieces that have to be done yet on it. And we have all of them readily available to do the tuning. The next thing is, and this is going to get mounted up once I get a dash display in, but we have our ability to monitor the amount of current that is being applied to the motor. So this would be our load indicator. It is governed, so we are not going to exceed the 200 amps. That's the threshold that I have established here for the amount of power to at least initially, probably long term, work with. So that gives me adequate power, and yet I'm not going to stress any of the parts here beyond their limit. So that was an engineering call that had to be made. So we have that. We simply put in our circuit board here of, of switches and, or of um, terminals, excuse me, of terminals. And that's where everything comes in. This is all going to be niced up in, and cleaned up. So it's still in its rough stage. Um, actually take note over here is we have a current measurement sensor on a, a little piece of copper that runs out of the motor controller. And that's what gives us the signal for this. So it's a real-time reading that we're going to be receiving. So then let's back this out. I have a simple relay here that is turned on by a switch that is currently just roughed in up there. Now let's go ahead and turn the switch on. We're going to energize this relay. 
Now that the switch is on, our speed controller immediately booted up and we've got to wait around five seconds here for this to do the master boot. Now it's 100% ready to function. I could actually jump on a tractor and take it for a drive. I'm just going to demonstrate. It's currently in neutral. I have verified, double verified it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press the throttle. Now it's not going to be under a load so you'll see a little hunting with the, with the RPM. It's not a case that it's just really it's going to turn the current on and off, on and off, trying to maintain. That's the trimming portion that we're going to have to work on here. So it's a fine line between the heavy load that it can be under and a neutral load. And that's going to be something that's going to be developed. So I'll demonstrate here. So you can observe, observe, there's a little bit of hunting involved. When you're driving it, it's very smooth. Uh, we're going to be working on that portion. So that is uh, how we put this whole thing together. Uh, a lot of details. Now we have a lot of little enhancements here. So I'll go ahead and turn the system off for now. So the next stage is we have a cover. It's a see-through cover. Got a piece of polycarbonate on top of it here. And it's simply going to go in and protect everything. Uh, it's it, going to be sent off to be powder coated so they have the same black coating. So we'll have this cover on here and I'll be able to see everything inside. We'll have our, our current display and some other dash display will be up on top of it as far as I'll be able to see the activity but it will be sealed off in the environment. Uh, so this, as I said, is going to get powder coated. It's going to, I think it's going to work out really good. Simply slide on. We'll have a little fastener here to hold it in place. And we're getting really close to actually getting this out and running it. And the next biggest challenge that I had was actually really a significant challenge is since 144 volts is a really odd number for our battery chargers, uh, we were originally planning on building our own battery charger. Uh, going to be a task, but we had it already planned out. And uh, as luck would have it on eBay, I've been looking for almost a year now, and I ran across one. This was probably from an old server farm, uh, but 144 volts. So I put on uh, the connector here. So this has got 100. This would be at the potential at the battery. And I have a connector here going in to our charger. And this is going to be the charging methodology. There will be caps that are over here to seal them and make sure everything is safe. And at this point now, we are ready to charge. Okay, the charger is energized and it's starting to put in power into our array of batteries that are down below here. Uh, this is a fully self-regulated maintaining charger. So it is a very powerful charger. It's got a big array inside of transistors. It is intended to be incredibly smooth. So don't think old fashioned battery charger. This is a high frequency charger. That's really kind to the batteries, very, very balanced. So that is now in place. So blind luck, I ended up getting this charger. Very fairly priced out on eBay. It's one of them things, classic, uh, where do you sell a 144 volt charger to? Well, there's probably one other guy and I'm the guy. So this is the model that we put in place. Uh, it, the tractor from the top here worked good, fulfilled the objective, and the next task that we're going to be performing with this tractor is going to be taking it out and we'll be starting to do the research. So I'll be monitoring with a watt meter how much current gets put in, or how many watts, give me, how many watts gets put into the battery, so we'll be keeping track of that from pretty much this date forward. And on the other side, I'll be monitoring, and I'm just getting ready to work on that, how much fuel I'm consumed. And then we're going to be doing the research and analyzing out the solar that's going to be enter, off the solar array on top of the shop here, the energy that goes in there, and then the fuel that I put in this to do a task. So half the task will be done with the electric and the other half will be done running off the old conventional gasoline engine. I will measure at the end of the project the consumption and a whole bunch of other factors. So consumption, I guess we'd say the carbon index. I will be also looking at 
functionality. Is the gas engine versus the electric? Um, which one works the best? Uh, unknown at this time, you know, uh, the, the smoothness. Um, using my three-point um, fence trimmer as an example, I'll be fertilizing and seeding. Uh, I'll be raking hay. There's all these tasks that this tractor will be performing, like it normally does every year, but half of them tasks will be done utilizing the electric drive train and the other half, again, using the engine. So time will tell. This is a long-term study, so we'll know the final results come late fall. But for right now, I just wanted to give you this review of where we're at. Functionality, we're doing real good. I appreciate your time. Make sure you subscribe, comment, and I thank you and have a great day.